Hello and welcome, welcome to Wombat's beginner guide for our new hit, The Rats. This game puts you right in the center of a dramatic carnival of plot twists, betrayal and retribution. With your rat family sharing the underground with some eldritch horrors, you'll be fully in charge, feeding, growing, customizing and sending them on a looting spree. And we will share all the essential info and tips with you. Let's take a closer look at the game, shall we? So, in the rats, your family of rodents fell from grace and only you can bring them back to the top. This is no easy journey, but you will find plenty of help in the seemingly unfriendly underground. The basics are pretty straightforward. Raid your neighbors, collect cheese um, for food and rat souls to get more rats in your family. The more of it all you have, the stronger your family is and the smoother your road to the top of the rat pyramid will be. Now in the game you have four types of rats each type stronger than the previous one. The basic grey critters, the king rat, and the angel rat, and the demon rat. The stronger your rats are, the better they do in raids and the faster they tear down obstacles. As you can see, they all have specific level ranges. To upgrade the rat type, you will have to either feed them, as you can see, this one needs to be fed eight times to level up, or you can mix them. So for example, if you mix um, two level five rats, you can get uh, one level six rat or even seven, depending on how advanced your level five rats are, so to say. Apart from that, each rat also has its own skill specialization. There are four of these in total, so there's stealing, there's loot, protection, and attack. They all basically correspond to the game's main offensive and defensive mechanics, so let's talk about those. There aren't really a lot of defensive measures that you can rely on in the rats. It makes sense because the whole point of the game is raiding others instead of just sitting comfortably in the warmth of your underground home. Still, there are a couple of things that you can do. For example, rat traps. I believe those are available starting from level 6. They will keep the assailants uh, on your dungeon at bay from stealing cheese and the rats with higher protection stats like this rat minator here they uh, have a higher chance of sustaining the damage dealt and they might also run the enemy resources to try and steal some cheese back from them so even if the enemy succeeded though you have plenty of useful knickknacks and devices to compensate for that loss but uh, you have bindings Right now, I don't have any injured rats to demonstrate that, but you basically have that. You have defibrillators, which you might have seen a bit earlier, and they all pick your rats up, get them up and running in no time if they suffer damage. Then there's the lucky box, this thing here that gives you free stuff every now and then. The treasure chest, look at that, uh, we got some gloves and love potions nice and the scientist's quest so all of these things were uh, they're great to earn some cheese back or other useful items like red bugs and energy you will need energy to attack your neighbors and as for the red bugs they're useful for pumping your rat skills when you lack the specific token for that you can just pay and make them a little bit better at what they're already good at. But still, you will mainly be busy with the dishonorable but pretty satisfying active theory. Remember, your main goal is to pile up cheese 
that and also souls to grow your population of rats. You can either choose to assault a random neighbor or retaliate for an attack launched on your family. Now, I'm a very vengeful person, so let's try back at Thomas. Thomas, you have no idea what's coming at you, buddy. So as you can see, you can plot your revenge straight from the journal. Let's talk raiding. Raids are always done in parties of five critters. If you have more than five rats in the family, the game will form a party randomly for you as you just saw. So because of that, you should keep your family's levels and skill set fairly balanced to always have a winning hand. Personally, I find it helpful having a couple of king rats with higher stealing and attack skills. That helps you with the two most critical things, success rates of snatching the cheese, like here, uh, or stuffing the vigilant guards. Let's find someone who's awake. Ah, uh, there we go. The latter you need to, first of all, to lower the enemy's defenses so that they don't notice you stealing, and also to get more souls for your rat army. Throughout the game you will also find many helpful items, like here, uh, that can aid you with either of these things, like poison for staffing, or gloves and hand grenades and dynamite for snatching cheese. Use these sparingly though, even if you get a promo pack at the very beginning, the grenades and the rest fade fairly quickly, so you might want to put more effort into developing your fighters rather than just using these items all the time. Mind you that the 95% success rate doesn't always mean a total win, and you might wake up the assaulted party or get bonked in the process. So um, let's see how lucky we get this time. And we went unnoticed, huh? Well, that's great. And let's show you the staffing, the staffing mechanics. So we have a fairly low percent uh, success rate, even though this rat specializes in attack. So we're just gonna use poison to increase our chances. And feed that guy with cheese, and oof, it's gone. And we got some pretty useful items for collections and uh, for the stealing. Nice. Let's get some more cheese, uh, smoke grenade, so that nobody sees us. Uh, well, they saw us, but we still managed to get away with it. So that's pretty much it. It's straightforward and fun, the best of two worlds. The game has more to offer though than the simple grinding, so let's talk about the aspects you don't want to miss. First of all, there are side activities like the contest and dungeons. They both rely on the same attack mechanic, but they reward you in a different way. The contest here, it has uh, leagues and ranked rewards that will give you a significant progress boost, like extra rats or souls or cheese. While dungeons, they have uh, rare stuff available in their in special treasure chests. Let's just clear those waves real quick. It's the same process really, so as you can see, uh, yes, poison works even on rat skeletons. <laughs> Look pretty fun. Um, we have quite high success rate. I do think that this will be, yeah, neat. And in the dungeons, as you can see by those like green points, those are the points that you get for ranked competition in the contest. You can also get those in the dungeons. You don't have to play against others to get those, which is pretty neat. Um, final wave. What I like about dungeons is that you can use rats multiple times, unlike in usual combat. So for each wave, your, uh, like your roster of rats, it gets kind of renewed, and you can use some of your more powerful fighters once again. Oh look! We will get to collections a bit later on, but it's actually pretty great that we got that one out of the way already, fairly early in the 
in the game. Look at that. What do we get? We have still have two keys. And huh, see? So there are uh, bigger rewards. And they're pretty useful ones like tokens for skills upgrade. And those cost money. And we got over 2,000 score points. Which took us to... Oh yeah! Position 329. Not too bad, huh? As you can see, we managed to complete one collections. Collections is something you don't want to miss too. Those are... Well, weird, <laughs> but still pretty fun things to do because um, you can combine these items into one single different item. And those items, they provide upgrades for your rat's home to improve recovery, defense and other things. So this one we can use to improve sick bed and get our rats healthy again um, much faster than we do it now. And finally, don't shy away from customization. That's the whole kind of point of the game that you dress up your rats, make them look cool. Um, like, look at this little critter in the sunglasses. It's neat, right? But it's not just that. Uh, the costumes, they actually provide bonuses so you can strengthen your rat's skills, like stealing or attack or compensate where they lack with those. Um, they are limited in time, which is, I guess, besides skills upgrades, this is the other thing that you might want to consider spending your rat box on. Finally, there are some Wompley exclusive activities too. Check out the rats page on Wompley to see how your quick pod pets can get you some ears and Wombox. That was our rundown of the rats. Hope you'll enjoy this game. Join our Wombat Gamers Discord server and be on the lookout for more guides and let's plays. We guarantee you the next game to go live on Wombat is so vast, so diverse that you will definitely need some starter tips. Any guesses which game that might be? Write in the comments below. And stay playing and slaying! Ciao!